knows how good a defensive back you could have been, buddy. <laughs> Let me uh, do something. I'm not planning to do this, but I just got to sitting there thinking, how many of you guys out there coach for Coach Bowden? Would you stand, please? <laughs> How many former players are here today? Stand up, please. Thank you. And I tell you what, I bet there's a few more that would have been here, but just simply couldn't get away. But I know one thing, their love's in that casket. First of all, let me thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this celebration. And as you see, that, that's exactly what it's been. Uh, I was with Coach, and when he got his, I guess his, last reward here on earth when he was given that lifetime achievement award by the governor and i couldn't finish it i got up to talk and my throat was in my heart or something and i prayed and i prayed lord let me get through this let me make it a celebration Ms. Ann and Bowden family, uh, I appreciate you asking me to be a part of this for some of those guys back there. And it's truly an honor to be able to do that, to say thank you, my friend. You know, I was, I was really blessed in my life too in my coaching profession and, and other parts of my life. And I get, didn't get to finish it with Diane. And I'm going to tell you, when Coach walked in that pearly gates, Diane was right there giving him a chop. <clears throat> As a player, I got to go to the University of Alabama and learn from one of the greatest of all time. And as a coach, I had the opportunity to coach with Coach Bryant. I only stayed four and a half years with Coach Bryant, but I was 26 years here with Coach. And I'm gonna tell you, I've always thought the way to learn how to coach is take the good things and build on them. Find the bad things and eliminate them. And I got to eliminate a lot of things with Coach Bout. But Coach Bryant taught me how to win. Coach Bowden taught me how to care. And I needed that. I found out you could still coach tough. You could demand great effort if the players trusted you and you cared about them. And coach helped me do that. And I really believe that that was one of the things that separated Coach Bowden from the other coaches. He cared, but he shared too. He, there was not a single player on the team they didn't care about. I don't care if it was a star. I don't care if it was a backup. I don't care if it was a walk-on. And the important thing was that he made it important. He made, made you know that you were important.
And the thing, he didn't limit it to just football. It was about everything. You heard some of them talk about family. Mark talking about family and the importance. And you know, I, I thought so many times how important time is. Of course, Coach was, most of you that know him, he was an early riser. That light would be on early in the morning. Now, he didn't hang around much and after practice was over, he got home. And I think he probably went to bed and maybe eight o'clock or, or whenever. And I wondered what he did during that time that he was home. And I think one of the things about coaching, and that's not unique, that's true in other professions too, it's not about how much time you got, it's about how important the quality of that time is. And Coach, I, he knew how to do that too. But uh, I was thinking back, I was by myself on the back porch, and I just got to thinking about Coach and all the things that I remembered him doing. And I had one thought that popped up and it was actually when he was addressing the team after an early morning workout. Now, most of you guys sitting back there knew what 45, 45 men in the morning. That's, that's when we were in our bat program. And that was important to him. He always showed up in the first one, and he was there at the last one of the off season. And I never did ask him what he was doing, but I got a feeling he was looking at the starting point of that team, and he wanted to see how far they came during that time. And usually it was 12, 14 days. Now, you people wasn't up that morning and went through the MAP program. It was tough. Uh, my son-in-law told me after he went through uh, his basic training in the Navy, David, David did. And he said, I said, how was it? He said, coach, it don't even start to, the map, to compare to the MAP program. And it was tough, it was meant to be tough because that was really the foundation that coach started his football team off. And it was more mental, developing mental toughness than anything. Well, well if, you're, if, if you're not gonna be mentally tough, and, and these coaches sitting on the front row right here know, you ain't gonna be very mentally or physically tough either. And I was talking with Jimbo before we started today, and I said, how's it going? He said, coach, I don't know if you could coach today. And I go to practice from time to time, and I even go to the off-season program. I wanted to see what they were doing there. And uh, they were trying to get there. I'm talking about the coaches. But when you start talking about developing mental and physical toughness, you think about Coach Bowden, and he's such an easy-to-go guy, so calm in, in most things. Something happens on the football field and I'm, I'm doing flips and he's just over there with his arm folded. And I know there had to be more going on inside than what he showed. But those off season programs is what he built his team on. It was mostly drills that involved more than one person three, four, whatever. And if one person didn't do it bad enough, guess what? They got sent back and tried to do it again and do it right this time. Well, we had a little old thing there where we always graded them. We graded them on film every day after that workout. Each individual got graded. And if a guy got sent back 
three times in a drill, he got the opportunity to make up for that the next day that we worked out. He would come, they would come in at five o'clock in the morning and they would go through hell again before they started their workout. We gave them a 10 minute break and then they had to go through the drill again. Well, that's a, that's a tough way to learn how to do something right because you, were, you had other folks that, were, that you were accountable for. Well, that's football. It ain't about the 11 best players, it's about the 11 players that play the best. And that was coach's way of getting it done. We did it in Alabama when I was a player there, but I'm gonna tell you, it wasn't nowhere near like it was in Florida State. I mean, it, it was tough. I couldn't go through it right now. I couldn't carry a, a bunch through it. I couldn't last 55 minutes. I'd go hard for a few minutes, but, and I see a lot of these former players and I think that's the same thing with them. I kind of got carried off. <laughs> <coughs> But this is what Coach was doing. He was talking to the team that morning after the workout. And he had got word that a few of them were belly aching about it. And one thing he didn't like, if you weren't going to do your best, you better not talk bad about it because you're going to get to do it some more. And we were going to try to get better doing what was right. And so he told them this. He said, guys, don't pray for a lighter load. Pray for a stronger back. That was Coach Bowden. It was all about perspective. It was about a mindset. And he lived it. And I think back about a hot day in 1993 in the Meadowlands where that team needed that on the goal line. The offense needed it in order to go 99, I don't know, that much less than 100 yards in 23 plays and score the only points that we needed all day. And I'm telling you, if our defense had, had to go back on, if we'd have punted three downs and punt, there was not a player on that defense that could have got back in the game because we had a hard enough time getting them off the field. We had an agreement with our defensive players that we weren't going to walk on the field and we weren't going to walk off. You all remember that, guys? And they had a hard time getting off the field. We had to meet them out there and drag some of them off because I didn't want to run them on Monday for walking off the field. But the thing, I think the thing that stood out, uh, and I think most of these other coaches will agree, he stood for doing your best. And he was gonna hold you accountable to it. And I think that's what's wrong with us as a nation today. We don't have that accountability. Not many of our people nowadays could get through that off season program. And I'd hate, so hated to walk out there on that field with them on Saturday. But it's a challenge that we still got in front of us. And I think <laughs> that same thing in the off-season program, I think they told me I had three to five minutes. I don't have a watch. <laughs> so run me off when you want me to sit down. But that same thing, speech that he gave them in the, that day in the off-season program that helped that defense, that helped that offense, it helped that team become national champions because it started in that off-season program. Uh, he always had a reason and he had a purpose. You know, Coach is our leader. He is our buddy. And now he's our saint. Oh, he'll be missed. We won't forget him. 
but try remembering the great things that he stood for and laid the groundwork for this program. And one other thing, you know, he didn't have his biggest win on a Saturday. You think about all those wins that he had. It wasn't in 93. It wasn't in 99. It wasn't in those other days to trying to, to get to that point to compete. But it was on Sunday morning, when he walked in, and Jesus said, great job, buddy. Thank you, Coach. <laughs>